Okay, so today we're with Councillor Graham Burgess. Okay to call you Graham? Certainly. Lovely. Um, so at the moment we're just going through and giving an opportunity for the councillors to sort of give a bit of background about themselves so the residents know a bit about you as a human as opposed to your politics. But we'll obviously start with why you became a councillor. Uh, well, I'd always been involved in things. I was heavily involved with Lee Community Association uh, when that was being built, uh, when I was in the services. And then one of the ladies on the committee there was also on the committee for the League Conservatives and took me aside one day and said, Graham, you'd be an ideal sort of councillor. I hadn't thought about it. But anyways, I went along. This is 1991. Joined the committee. 1993, I was the chairman. Stood in 94, lost to an independent. Uh, stood in 98 and was elected and I've been there ever since. Totally enjoying it. So 20 years? Yeah, 20 years. 20 years. And 24 years in the Navy? 24 years in senior service, yeah. Yeah, no, that's... So, what would you say you like about being a councillor? Uh, trying to sort people's problems out. Uh, trying to improve the skills of people. And my role at the moment as Chairman of the Community Board is mainly the leisure side of things. I also have the contractors, so we have uh, the grounds maintenance. Mm -hmm. We have the street cleansing. And we have I have housing as well, so it's quite a big remit. So on the um, grounds maintenance, there's been quite a lot of negativity in the press at the moment or social media about sort of the weeds and the grass, etc. Is there any um, is there any plans to improve what is currently happening? Well, yes, Hampshire County Council decided that they would only spray uh, the weeds, etc., once a year, whereas they used to do it three times a year. Because of that. Weeds have grown, they haven't been removed, so we took the decision to spend £46,000 to employ extra contractors to get rid of the weeds. We started at one end of the borough and we're working towards the other. Mm -hmm. Now this takes time, you can't just say, okay, we'll start, it's finished. It takes time to do a whole area and people have to realise that yes, the weeds will be done, but it's not instantaneous, it will take time. Yeah, but the main thing is that it is being addressed. It is being addressed, yes. Yeah, no, absolutely, that's good. Um, are there any negatives to being a councillor? Uh, well, you're on duty 24-7, just as you were in the forces. Um, you can be anywhere. In fact, there was one time I was down in the Falkland Islands when I worked for the Mod Civil Service, and I was in the mess there, and a chap came up and said, Excuse me, you're one of the Gosport councillors, aren't you? I said, Yes. I was actually mayor at the time. I said, What's the problem? Well, I've got a planning issue. <laughs> and so I, I took the details, and I emailed the planning officer at the town hall, and uh, he couldn't believe it, but yeah, we got the answers and sorted it out. And you were in the Falklands at the time? I was in the Falklands at the time, yeah. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a long time ago? Uh, that was 2005. Yeah, so not as quick with sort of correspondence and communications? No, 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 it was just down there, he had a problem, he talked to me, I emailed the planning officer, they resolved the situation. Fantastic. Yeah. You must feel like God. No, 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 no. <laughs> So sometimes, sorry, that's me knocking the table. So sometimes you feel like you're never off duty, but apart from that, you well, you obviously like it because you've been doing it for twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. And I you live it. local to Gosport. Sorry. You live local to Gosport. I live in Lee, yeah. Okay, and you live there with your wife. Yes, been there since seventy-seven. Oh. Wife and two daughters. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've got the um, introductions out of the way. So we're going to ask you a few more questions. Okay. Uh, let's go in with a quite a meaty one. Uh, what happened, or what has happened to you in your life that you think has made you a stronger person? Well, I think uh, I was born and raised in Carlisle, as they say, and uh, at school, went to grammar school, it was a boys' grammar school, mixed with the girls' grammar school, didn't seem to get on very well there. Do you think you were distracted? No, well, yes, but not, <laughs> not by the opposite sex, if you understand what I mean. And uh, it just didn't seem the same. So, big brother did national service in the uh, in the Royal Navy. Uh, I was about eight when he uh, when he did it, and he gave me a photo of his ship, the Whitby, which I had above my bed. And I just went right. I'm going to join up. So at the tender age of sixteen years and two months, I joined HMS Raleigh, where they were taking people up to the age of thirty-two. So it was a learning experience. So you were 16, joined up with people up to the age of 32, which must Correct. have been... yeah. Because if I remember when I was 16, I thought somebody who was 30 was quite old. Yes, very old. 
<laughs> Makes me ancient now. So you said being in the military made you a stronger person? It did. You develop teamwork. Uh, you'd think as a team, you'd look at solving problems. Uh, and it, it was really good. The camaraderie was good. Uh, life was good then, it really was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I guess in a way it gives you, um, it almost makes you realise that a family is not just your immediate blood family, a family is a community you belong in. Correct, to. correct. And that's what I feel about Lee at the moment, where I live. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if you had one day left to live, what would you do? Well, the wills are all done, so I suppose it would be go and have a decent meal, and crack a couple of really decent bottles, and enjoy life. Would you do anything else? <sighs> I can't think of anything else. I think, uh, you know, if you knew that your life was going to end that day and you had the chance to do a couple of things, yes, I'd do that. Yeah. Apart from saying cheerio to the family. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's probably best if you leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what decade do you think you belong in? Well, I think it's split between two. It's the tail end of the 60s and the early 70s. It was just a fantastic time. Music, uh, going out, what you could do, etc. Uh, and life in general. It seemed really, really good. Because the austerity, enjoyed it. austerity had, had moved on from the end of the war. Yes, and, and I think very, people had got their... Yeah, they'd got their independence. It was good. You could go out, you could enjoy yourself. Did you uh, wear flares? Sorry? Did you wear flares? Uh, I did have did flares, you? yes. Have yes. you got any pictures? Well, don't forget, uh, then I was wearing uh, rig uniform and I had 28-inch bell bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uniform. Was that when they used to press your trousers and you had to press seven? Is that five or seven. I had and five. And that was the oceans, was it? Is that, is that, oh, there's is tales that about this and tales about that, but uh, it depended on your size and height. Oh, okay. But if you cheated, you could just do five, which is what I did. Oh, okay. So if you've got short legs and long I'm short body. legs, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the 60s and 70s, that's cool. And um, so, who knows you the best, more than anyone else in the world? I'd say it's my wife, Mel. Okay. First met in 73, married in 74, uh -huh. and uh, been there ever since. Yeah, absolutely. And what would she, what, if she had to describe you, in sort of three to five words, what would she? How would she describe you? Probably a world in dervish. Would she? What does she? Like, I've never. What does she love about you? Well, that's a good question. That I've never really asked her that. Probably best not to. At the moment. <laughs> Probably not at the moment. It changes. But yeah, um, you have good times. You have bad times, as as, as everybody does. And uh, but yeah, I'm really enjoying life. Yeah, and you're full of energy, and you. Yeah, know. still. And that's what she likes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's good to hear. What, um, so in relation to talking about um, friends, what part, character trait of your best friend did you, or do you, most admire? Well, my best friend was in the services. Uh, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. And we were on course together, 7071 in Collingwood, and we served in a ship together, 7779. He had the radar section, I had the WT section, and we're always trying to outdo each other. Uh, and it was good fun, good banter, we'd always go ashore together and uh, we got on well together with our wives and one thing or another and then he moved further up north and I stayed down here when we left the services. So was he always like a brother to you? It's somewhere you could always ring and rely on, yes. Yeah, so yeah. the fact that he was always there for you yeah. and vice versa. Mm. Yeah, and there's a sad end to that story though, isn't there? There is, he lost his wife recently and uh, I said, right, I'm coming up, and he said, no, don't bother. Um, he didn't want a full uh, burial service. He just wanted to cremate it. And then he got a bit morbid, and he was talking about he was going to end his life, and I said, don't, this is stupid. And I talked to him on the Thursday, and he did it on the Friday, and that was the end of earning. Yeah. And do you have any, obviously, apart from sadness, do you have any thoughts about that? No. I just think it was just a waste. I could understand he'd lost his wife and his wife was, they were very, very, very close. Uh, but I just thought it's a waste of someone who had a lot to give. Yeah. 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 That is, it's always sad when that mm. happens. And they were together such a long time. Yeah. A yeah, bit like, like yourself and your wife. You yeah, know, yeah. That similar sort of time. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, what do you what do you like about Gosport where we live, our hometown? Well, I like it. It's got it's got everything that uh, I need. Uh, I love the place. It can't get any bigger. It's got a thick size. There's lots of water all the way around us. And uh, I used to do a lot of sailing. I used to race offshore for the Navy. Um, I enjoy that a lot. I'm a bit old for that now. Um, it's the same as I like Lee because Lee can't get any bigger with the sea, Daedalus and the Alva Valley. And it's a nice people that are down here. There are a lot of ex-service people. A lot of people I know, a lot of people I've met through my work as a councillor and stay in contact with and uh, yeah, I really love it. What, um, so looking back, finally, looking back over your career today as a councillor, what have you achieved in Gosford that you're proud of or you think has contributed to the improvements in our area? I think mainly the leisure facilities. In a sense, you look at the new leisure centre, you look at the splash park and the new splash park to be built at Lee, you look at the Alva Valley, the play area there, Leesland Park, all the other play areas that we've brought in and uh, so that people can enjoy themselves. I think people really enjoy that and I can look back and think, yep, yeah, I was involved in that. That's good. Yeah, no, and I think you're right. It's really important that people have outside areas that they can enjoy. I mean, I use Gosport Park a lot and there's, you know, there's a community who use that park and they should be valued. And there is a feel and people do that. And I think now there's... A lot of people are trying to take more of an interest in Gosport. I mean, we've had problems with litter and one thing or another, and now we've got the Wombles, and you mm. look what they're achieving. Mm. Started off with just two or three people, now there's 300 odd people, and they're going around picking up litter, making Gosport a cleaner, better place to live. And I hope it continues. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, we were talking about that earlier, weren't we? The fact that actually everyone has to take a degree of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. The time has passed where, we, where people can post on social media and share their dismay at the situation but actually just pick up a bit of litter and take it home. Yeah, get out and do Put it. it. In the bin. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, Graham, thank you so much. No, for your thank time. you. It's an absolute pleasure. No problems at all.